Most animals with a backbone possess a tail, and they use them for all sorts of purposes. There isn't just one reason for having a tail, it all depends on what the animal is adapted for. That's why humans, along with other apes such as gorillas and chimps, don't have them. Millions of years ago, when our ancestors stopped living in trees and came down to the savanna ground, we no longer needed a tail to help with climbing. Instead, we adapted to this new environment and lost our tails. But if you look at a very young embryo of a human, you can actually see that at this very early stage of our development, we do in fact possess a tail. This information reveals a lot about the history of our evolution and our relation to other animals, by confirming that at one point we did have tails, just like many of our animal relatives. So what do animals that do have tails actually use them for? Humans lost their tails because we stopped needing to use them, so this must mean animals that have them are still using them for something. Well, as you can see from the multitude of different shapes and sizes of the various tails throughout the animal kingdom, animals use their tails for all sorts of things. Let's start with the most basal vertebrates, fish. It should be fairly obvious that fish use their tails in order to propel themselves through the water they inhabit. Therefore, fish have retained their tails throughout their evolution, since they have always been using them for an important task that enables their survival. However, they certainly vary throughout the different groups of fish, and this is due to the different niches that they fill, which require them to have differently shaped tails. For example, shark tails are generally adapted to propelling the animals at great speeds through the ocean, whereas seahorses possess extremely modified square tails that are used for gripping onto seaweed. Next, we come to the cetaceans, the group that includes dolphins and whales. Although they are not fish, but mammals, they use their tails for a very similar purpose, propelling themselves through the water. However, a key difference between the way both groups use their tails is how they move them. Due to differences in their skeletons, fish can only move their tails from side to side, whereas cetaceans can only move their tails up and down. But it still has the same effect, enabling the animals to glide gracefully through the water. Moving on to the land, one use for tails here is as a counterbalance. A good example of this would be cats, which utilise their tails to help with their balancing. When they are moving along narrow areas such as a fence or a ledge, their tails will make small twitching motions as they adjust themselves and help with counterbalancing the animal. The highly flexible tail of a cat therefore allows them to climb effectively and to balance as they do so. Another example of counterbalancing tails can be found in the fossil record. The theropod dinosaurs, such as T. rex, generally had very long tails, and in the case of T. rex, they would have been useful in keeping the animal's massive head from causing the whole body to tilt forwards. Huge muscles found in the tails of tyrannosaurs also allowed them to balance themselves and aided in other parts of the creature's lifestyle. Talking about dinosaurs, another use for their tails was in the movement of the animals. Living relatives of the dinosaurs, crocodiles, actually still use this method of walking today, showing how important tails are for these animals, and were for large dinosaurs. A major muscle, called the chordofemoralis longus, is critical to the way these animals moved. The chordofemoralis longus is a limb muscle that is attached at one end to the femur, and at the other end is embedded in the tail. This muscle, which grew to huge proportions in larger sized groups of dinosaurs, such as hadrosaurs and tyrannosaurs, enabled the leg to be pulled backwards by contracting, giving these creatures powerful strides. The muscle runs along the tail and attaches underneath to the vertebrae of the tail, making the tails of crocodiles and large extinct dinosaurs very important to their lifestyles, ensuring that these particular groups of animals maintained their tails. Several different land mammals have very long, bushy tails, for example wildebeest and horses. They use their tails in order to swipe at nearby flies that may be trying to land and feed on them, making it difficult for the flies to actually land on them, or even killing them. Wildebeest tails in particular are so effective at this that many African natives have actually constructed fly swatters out of them. A prehensile tail is the name given to a tail of an animal that has developed to be able to grip objects. Prehensile tails have evolved multiple times throughout various groups of vertebrates, notably in the New World monkeys, but also in many other groups of animals such as anteaters, pangolins, rats, and possums. They are also present in reptiles such as chameleons and snakes, and in some amphibians, such as climbing salamanders. A prehensile tail is obviously very useful in a forested environment, allowing animals to climb very effectively, and in some cases Cases, essentially acting as a fifth limb. Many of the New World monkeys possess a bare patch of skin near the end of their tails that are potentially as sensitive as a human fingertip, and help the creatures to grab onto branches as they use their tails to climb through the trees of their jungle habitats. 
Another very important use for tails in some groups of vertebrates are as social communicators, using their tails to indicate their emotions or even the presence of danger. Dogs are a good example of this, as they use their tails to convey how they're feeling. A wagging tail is generally an indication of happiness, while a stiffened tail can be a sign of tension being felt by the animal. Cats also indicate how they feel by using their tails, as well as using them for balance. Conversely to dogs, a moving tail is usually a sign of agitation, whereas a stiff tail held upright is a sign of contempt. Certain species of deer, notably the white-tailed deer, have been observed using their tails as indicators of danger. They have been described as raising their tails in order to signify to other members of their herd that they are alarmed, therefore increasing the chance of the group's survival as they all become more attentive to their surroundings. Birds have retained their tails all through their evolution, and although the actual vertebrae that make them up are fairly short, most groups of birds have a row of specialised feathers coming off of the rear of the skeletal tail, called rectrices. The inner two feathers of this row are held by ligaments to the bony tail, while the others are embedded in the muscle around the bones. The rectrices perform all sorts of functions, and vary throughout the different bird groups. During flight, the tail feathers can be used to control certain movements in the air, such as turning, and can actually generate their own lift. The feathers are controlled by the ligaments and muscles at their bases, and allow for the complex manoeuvres that birds achieve when they fly. And rectrices are also used by birds such as woodpeckers and tree creepers, in order to stabilise them as they climb vertically up tree trunks. They are especially stiff in these animals, effectively creating a natural tripod, enabling the these birds to exploit their habitat to the fullest. But birds don't only use their tail feathers for flying or stabilisation. In some species, these particular feathers are integral to their courtship displays. Instead of using the feathers just for flight, many birds have extremely colourful tails that are used to attract mates during the breeding season. An obvious example of this is the peacock, but there are also other examples of this throughout the bird family. One example is the superb lyrebird, a native to Australia, which have extremely elaborate tails. The males cast their tails over their heads during a display, creating an umbrella shape with them. In addition, another bird that uses their tails for display are the long-tailed paradise wider. These animals develop ridiculously long tails during the breeding season, reaching up to three times the actual length of the creature's body. Only the males actually possess these tails, however, and only for a short time of the year, but when they do have them, they look incredibly impressive. Finally, we come to something quite different, tails in invertebrates. These appendages have a very different evolutionary history to all the other structures featured in this video so far, since invertebrates are obviously not very closely related to vertebrates. This means that they did not retain tails from a common ancestor like vertebrates, instead the different groups of invertebrates with tails have independently evolved them. A typical example of an invertebrate with a tail would be the scorpions. However, their tails are actually just extensions to the backmost part of their bodies, called the metasoma, that have been highly modified over their evolution to form a tail-like structure. These structures play an important role in the lifestyle of the animals, since they bear the stinger on the end of them, which is utilised when the creatures are hunting prey. Another group of invertebrates that possess tails are the stick insects, also called phasmids. A particular example from this group is the Australian walking stick, which has a fairly prominent tail. They use their tails for all sorts of purposes, including in camouflaging themselves as foliage. By curling their tail, which is again an extension of their abdomen, over themselves, they hang amongst the leaves to evade predators. In addition to this behaviour, they will also raise up their tails to form a pose that resembles a scorpion, in order to attempt to scare off any potential threats. So invertebrate tails have evolved from the abdomen of the animals to perform all sorts of functions, a great example of convergent evolution with vertebrates that possess tails, since completely different lineages have all evolved the same basic structure, whether they are extensions of the vertebral column or extended abdomens. And so there's the answer, and as is usually the case with evolution, it's far more complicated and messy than you would expect. The multiple times that tails have appeared and disappeared in different animal groups, and all the different uses for the structures, makes it impossible to give just one straightforward answer for why animals have tails. Hopefully though, this video has given you a better understanding of the many reasons for having or not having a tail. If you would like to find out more about our incredible universe and the wonderful life we share it with, I would greatly appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel, if you feel that we deserve it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new.